Keeps shutting off. I can't figure it out. Bernard Bredauer says, "Very good, Dan. How many knots do you know?" He's referring to the the walking stick video of the spiral knot. Um, I know quite a few knots. I use the I use the bowling knot the most. It's the about the most practical knot you can use. I use the Zeppelin bend um, square knot once in a while. The Marlin spike a lot. Uh, several knots I use all the time, but I probably know all in all probably maybe 30 knots real well, and probably 100 knots not the greatest, but I I know when I want to use them. So what I do is I keep video all my videos on my phone, and when I know I I, have, I come to a situation where I know this knot would be perfect for, and I can't really remember how to tie it, I just pop the video in real quick and watch it. And then, then I'm good, you know. That I can I can just tie it. Um, that's a, a suggestion. Again, I made a video a while back about using your phone um, as part of your survival kit. That's something I keep on my phone is all my knots. I keep a bunch of survival manuals on my phone, you know, just for those occasions. But I suggest you learn. If you learn only 12 knots, look at look back at some of my videos and learn 12 of my knots and. You, they would cover any tying situation you could ever run into in your life. And I tie all my knots, I video them over my shoulder so you can see how I'm tying them. I tie them in the most practical way, the easiest way to tie them, because there's a dozen, way to tie, a dozen ways to tie every knot. And I tie them in the most practical way to use out in the field to make it easier for you. And I show in the videos just how I use them. Uh, a good example is yesterday we were on our way to uh, Talaboon to pick up a, a rental car that Marfi's sister and her future brother-in-law rented for us that we're all going to go to the city. On the way we, we drove by our friend Terrence in his uh, little multi-cab and he was broke down with an overheated engine. So we turned around to see what we could do for him. We really couldn't help him. I offered, well, can we tow you into town real quick? So. We towed him into town, the 12 kilometers into town, and I have a, a rope in the truck that I made for specifically for towing. I, I wove back an eye splice, you know, a loop into the end of both ends of the rope so you can loop it around something, and so the other side you got to tie a knot. And uh, on the knot side that I tied, I tied a bowling knot, and jerking and pulling a truck all the way to town, when I got there, all it took was light pressure with my thumb to untie the knot. You know, that's a mark of a good knot. A good knot is easy to tie, it holds very strong, and it's easy to untie. That's a perfect knot. And that, that would be the bowling knot. Is the very best knot of anything I've ever seen. The Zeppelin knot's also very good for connecting two ropes. The Alpine butterfly is good for making a loop in a, in a string. Um, there's just dozens and dozens and dozens of, of different knots, and find one you like. There's some knots I tie just because I like. I just like the way they tie. It makes me feel like I'm. I'm. I'm there's, there's simpler knots, but I, I like the way. Like a. I like a Carex bend knot when you're connecting two ropes. It's, it's actually quite complicated, but it makes me makes me. I guess it makes me think of my grandfather when I tie him. Is, is what it reminds me of. So that that happens to be one of the knots that I tie all the time. We're all different, but learn learn some knots. You, you'll be uh, much smarter for it. Uh, parables to carp. Gerald Dedon says, "Wow, you said it right." Oh, Didon. He's I'm talking about his name. Didon. 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 Gerald Didon. I don't know how to say it for sure. I enjoy each program very much. I do come over a month a year, mostly Laetty and Cebu. Well, maybe we'll run into you when you're here. Um, nice to meet people. Parables to Carp. Gerald did it again. This is a little fact about carp. The carp was brought to the U.S. 
by early European to eat by early early to, was bought, brought to the U.S. to eat by Europeans. The Asian carp was for grass eating in ponds. <coughs> Both can be used to eat or for fertilizer. In Louisiana, we eat most any fish like in the Philippines. Yep. Carp's best out of cold water, like good February water under the ice. Carp is good. Chicken on a speak. Delma Inez says nice Marfi. Nice OE Marfi. I don't know what OE means, but um, yeah. Marfi did a wonderful job cooking that day. And that day I had a bad fever, so all I, all I did was get them started and let those guys just take over the video. They did a fantastic job. And Shannon was kind of the cameraman on the tripod. Uh, and she had two cameras that day, so she had filming from different directions. They were using their, their creativity. Gerald Deedon from Pine Trees to School Honors. Rod, Rod's a great guy, and I watch his programs too. But city life in Cebu is so expensive. I, I agree. I think Cebu is an expensive place. It's a terrible place. It's expensive to get around. The food's expensive. Go to a market. Uh, potatoes here are 70 pesos a kilo. In the market in Cebu, they're 100 pesos a kilo. Same in Tac Balaran, too, where you think in the city they'd be cheaper, but they're not. Um, I, don't know, I, I can't stand the city, so I, I stay away from them. The only reason we went to the city yesterday on a trip was everybody else wanted to go and they needed someone to drive them, so I volunteered just trying to be nice. And, 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 I, got a, and, I, and I got a burger, too, so that was fantastic. I had two double cheeseburgers and a fish sandwich and some fries. It was really good. Really, really good. And thank you for that, Brian. That was fantastic. Um, Bushcraft Brooms. Globe, here you go. Globe 255. We haven't heard from her for a while. If you're, you are using hemp or similar material, and she's meaning hemp, to bind with, the method is first that you soak all of rope in water so it can soak up, soak up a great deal of water when you have it soaked up in the water. Said the same thing about three times, but no, nah, you're true. When you're using a natural a string like hemp and stuff, if you soak it in water, it keeps it from snapping on you. And what's really nice is after you get it tied tight, when it dries, it kind of shrinks and tightens up even tighter. That's, that's the beauty of, of wetting your string. In fact, that's the main thing. If you remember the old Indian movies where they put on, they stake a guy to the, to the ant mounds in the desert with rawhide, wet rawhide straps. And as the, the rawhide dries, it starts shrinking and shrinking and it starts pulling the guy farther and farther and they almost wind up getting crucified on the ground. That's a that's an old Apache trick or somebody like that. I know I watched too much TV as a kid, sorry. The stuff's in my head. Spiral Knot, Gerald Deedon. You said you do walking sticks. How about carving a few off off those for show. Um, I might be able to do a tutorial on a walking stick. I'm not sure. Um, I usually carve when I'm trying to relax or when I'm very relaxed and I'm in, in a very peaceful place. Um, I, I've carved a few sticks here so far, and they really haven't turned out very good because I'm I just I'm just not at peace here. So my favorite was to to go up in the woods with my dogs in Dubuque, Iowa. I'd go up in the river bluffs and we'd, we'd find a few pieces of uh, like a bottom branch off of a you know a couple hundred year old cedar tree, and then carry it all the way home. I'd get four or five of them and I'd set them in a in a box and I'd, I'd handle them every day for a couple of weeks until I just all of a sudden something would pop in my head. What what what's a good thing to put on this stick? And um, I can't remember who said it, but for me, there's a face in that stick. You just have to figure some way to uh, chip all the, the, the waste away from it, basically. Um, I'm not an artist at all in any, any, any way, way or form. I know a few techniques, and when I carve things out, they, some of them really turn out nice, though. Uh, go back and look at my videos. I have a, a video on my walking sticks. I have a, several that I made back home. A couple that I've carved in the Philippines are on there. Um, 
Red cedar is the best to carve in. It's the most beautiful. It has this wonderful smell when you carve it. But maybe I'll try to do a tutorial maybe once. What I don't have here is I don't have any vices. I don't have a, a, a big block to carve on. So it's, it's very tough to hold your work. So and, and it, the tools are very dangerous when you're when you're carving. So I'll, I'll see what I can do. Maybe I can make something for you. All right. Another one for the broom, but this has nothing to do with. Chris Bartlett says, "Hold on, it's coming." Tropical Depression Karen accelerates and moves closer to to Bicol. I may be saying Bahol, I'm not sure. Take it easy. It's been kind of overcast here, and it's been raining in the evening, so maybe that's maybe that's the depression he's talking about. I don't have a TV with any any news. We need, we don't have an antenna or anything like that right now, so um, I don't hear any of the news. If there's a typhoon, someone one of my neighbors would tell me or something like that, so we, we don't really worry about it too much. If it rains, it's going to rain. Let's see. Oh, my brother! My brother says I'm talking about the Wi-Fi. He says he wants to compliment me for the artistic ID icon. Presumably, you designed it. I don't know what I don't know what you're talking about. No, well, this is oh, well, this is Merck Morris. I don't know if you're talking about the orange, the orange blind owl in the beginning. Maybe that you're talking about. Uh, no, a guy, a guy named Ryan Bishop did that for us and gave it to us. He does, he does uh, graphic arts and stuff for a lot of the YouTube people out there. But he he donated that to us. And it's just a beautiful picture, isn't it? If that's what you're talking about. Another one for the broom, Jeremy Scott. Good job. Uh, Spiral. Not tutorial, Jeremy Scott. Enjoy the video. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy Scott, package from Chuck. Enjoy the video. Thanks for the gifts and sharing. Thank you very much, Chuck. Dutchie and Davo, I'd like to talk to you. I don't really care for your comments. You can say stuff about me, but don't say stuff about my daughter on my channel. That's pretty ignorant. Oh, I guess take it back. He's talking to somebody else that's saying stuff about my daughter. Okay, thank you, thank you, Dutchie and Dabo. I appreciate it. Got to read their three or four comments in a row where they're talking to other people. Um. Wi-Fi. See, my brother Doug again. I actually nabbed it off the internet. He's talking to somebody else. Sorry. Life with a foreigner. Murphy story. Jane. El Saga. I love your story. It's awesome. Thank you very much. Murphy had a hard time expressing herself on that. That's why I kind of helped her through the story. And you can see she's agreeing and stuff. I know what the story was, and I, I know what she wants to say, but she just has a hard time spitting it out. And uh, if she, if I said something she didn't like, she would have told me through the video. But thanks. Uh, questions from from uh, September twentieth. Nice video. It's also from Jane El Saga. Yeah, here's my favorite one here. Van White Set from White Set at BellSouth.net. Feel free to send him an email or 10,000 emails, please, would be wonderful. That's W I W H I T S E T D at Bell South, B E L L S O U T H dot net. This is the guy that says I'm a racist. And he they're offended by the comment someone else put on Life is like a black girl's left leg. It's never right. And that sounds racist to me, he says. Maybe funny to you, but I don't see any humor in racist comments. 
even though you are not the one who started it. You simply read it. However, that makes you responsible. You know, this person needs to get a life, don't they? Then, junk fish carp. We ship to all ethnic areas, black areas, that's where they like carp. If that's what I said, that's what I mean. In, Amer in Iowa, on the Mississippi River, all along the river, carp is a huge industry of catching carp. Where does it go? Where does it get eaten? It gets eaten in the, in the big cities, and it goes to the black areas. That's who eats it. I don't know what to tell you. I'm sure the Asian people eat it too, but it's mostly the blacks. Blacks that came up from the south, that's who eats it. Um, that's another racist statement. I don't know any black people that eat carp. Do you? Yeah. People in the cities, that's the people that eat it. That, those are the people that I know. Unbelievable. If you could leave out the racist statements about black people and negative comments about life in the Philippines, your videos would be a lot better. Just my two cents. Thanks sincerely, Van White Set. Well, the comments I, I leave about the Philippines that are negative, that's because there's many negative things here in the Philippines. If I didn't portray the good and the bad, then my videos wouldn't be my videos, would they? You know, if I had, if I was little, little Miss Mary Sunshine all day long, my videos would suck. You know, there'd be nothing to them. You know, again, that's the sheep mentality. I'm not a sheep. I say what I what I think. That's what I do. Maybe you're offended by it. Maybe a whole bunch of people are offended by it right now. I'm sorry. I apologize to you. But that's the way I am, and that's the kind of videos I like to watch, so that's the kind of videos I make. And again, we're not going to talk about the negative stuff, but this guy right here, I don't know how we cannot not talk about it. Especially when the title of the thing is racist comments. You know, I'm not a racist. Obviously, I'm living with a Philippine lady, aren't I? So I'm not. I'm not racist. I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm not prejudiced, am I? If I'm living in, a, in a, with a Philippine lady. <sighs> Visit to Philip's house. Philip and Beth's house. Look at that. I, made, I hope I didn't spell that wrong. Um, nice pool. Is this also in Talibone? Well, we live in the Talibone area, kind of. Uh, the pool is fantastic. Richard Longmore talks about the shower, breakfast, and clothesline. Looks amazing. I would love to live there. Yeah, it, it's a nice place to live. I would recommend anybody coming here. It's, it's, fa it's a fabulous place to live. Working in the garden, planting coconuts by Murphy. <laughs> I always smile when I hear Murphy's laugh. I do too. This is from Outback, Out, Outback Dave. Um, <laughs> she's just a happy person. She she giggles and laughs and uh, you know, 99 percent of the time she's happy as can be. Another visit to Philip and Beth's house. Well, I must have spent. I must have spelled house wrong. That's that's ridiculous. I'll have to change that. A uh, beautiful place, Alex says. It is. It's a very beautiful place. And Philip and Beth have put in, you know, 12 hours a day work there to make it the way it is, and spent a lot of money and uh, budgeted their budgeted their money, and uh, it's beautiful. And, and and again, going there, Philip is a wonderful guy to talk to. He knows so much about different things, and Beth is just a just a very very sweet lady. So it's a great place to go. One of my favorite places to visit. Working in the garden and plant coconuts, Murphy. Everyone stand clear when Murphy has the bar. Look like Dan with the gift opening knife. Oh, I'm pretty crazy with that knife, aren't I? Yeah, yeah Murphy gets pretty wild with a bar. I'll tell you that. But it was my fault. I stepped in. I stepped in close to her to get a better picture. Visit to Beth. And Phillips House. That's pretty cool. Very, very good planning and arrangements of the area. Yeah, they they put a ton of time in, in planning out everything. Their house is a, a pretty little native looking house. They got a uh, a separate bathroom with a shower in it. It's really nice. Uh, a great big dining room with a attached kitchen that's all screened in. Um, 
They have a whole area where they raise chickens, a different area where they raise pigs. They have another building that they have like a, a video key in that they can sit and when they have people uh, staying over, they sleep there. He has a little workshop. He has several uh, water towers. Um, he has rice fields, places for his carabao. He has a giant mulching system uh, that he uses uh, for the garden, a beautiful garden. He has mango trees planted over his, I think he must have four or five hectares of land. He's got hundreds of mango trees uh, planted everywhere, orange trees, all kinds of different stuff. So it's, it's just it's just an awesome place. And again, he's, they're wonderful people. That's the best part. Adding new material to the fire kit. Uh, Myrna M. says, love watching your vlog. Very interesting. Thank you. Philip and Beth's house. Jim Nichols. Uh, this guy's an idiot. We'll, we'll skip him. Uh, let's see. Keyboard for the church and song. Myrna M. Miles says, thanks to Alex and to you, Dan, with all your good quality connections with the people that made everything possible. You're a nice man, Dan, with a beautiful family, too. Thank you for sharing. Well, I've been helping the people here because they help me, and they are very nice, and I've gone out of my way to help raise money for them and to uh, give them an opportunity to have something better. They're happy with what they had before, but they're much happier now with the stuff that they have, and they're using it uh, very, very well. And... Uh, I'm real happy for them, and I hope we can do much more. We want to we want to uh, finish the church. We want to put on a little building for the parsonage. We want to get a room for Sunday school and stuff like that. Uh, we want to put another bathroom on the in the church. We're working on the well right now. Um, we need to get pews inside the church. Marfi's mother would like to get some drapes for the church. Something as simple as that. Um, the, there's a plan someday down the, the road to put tile in the floor, you know, make it nice. We want to put a, a coating over the cement blocks, cement coating, and then paint it. Uh, little things like that. That that's just going to make it into a, just a wonderful place for them that they can be very proud of, because they are very proud of their church, and they and they are they should because they built the whole entire thing themselves and started it themselves. So, but thanks thanks Marina for for bringing that up. Uh, let's see, the water and shower, water shower, breakfast and clothesline, Richard Longmore says, Hi buddy, great vids, very interesting, I lived a bit like that in Spain for a year, washing clothes outside from a hose, cooking every meal outside in the open, it was the happiest time of my life, I dream of living that simple life again, good luck to you fellow. Yeah, I really appreciate that. There's not a lot of people that have done it, and it is it is a different lifestyle living here. I guarantee you, but it's very clean and very pure. You know, there's no lying, there's no cheating, there's no stealing. It, it's it's just it's a good it's a good thing. You don't have all the negativity of the city and stuff like that, and all the constraints that 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 you'd have. Um, it's been great for me. Uh, it's probably going to make me live an extra 20 years being here because uh, all the pressure I haven't been under and tension uh, from back home. <coughs> Keyboard for the church. Think Trout. Alex, you are definitely leading us by example. Your giving has brought joy and now that joy has become part of you. Your joy has now been shared with us. This this happened without a word from Dan, and, and says what I would say. What a wonderful price says. What a wonderful man you are. Um, now I I really thank Alex, and he he Alex did it all on his own. Uh, he I, I mentioned some things about helping the church and stuff, and he stepped in and, and and took it upon himself to help us. He's helped the church so much. He's helped our family. Um, just a wonderful guy. You look at that video of the bake shop. He helped that lady get the bake shop going so she didn't have to go all the way back to Kuwait so she could spend time with her daughter, with her child, and uh, you know things like that. He, he married a nice, a nice lady here in the Philippines, and when she goes to America to live with them, I, I guarantee you they're going to have a wonderful life. And I can't wait till he comes back here and visits, and, and we get to shake his hand and, and tell him firsthand how much he's changed their life and, and uh, how he's helped everybody. Uh, visit the Phillips House from Boat 
6868. Do they do most of the work themselves? If so, they're very hard workers. Uh, you know, Phillips, Phillips got to be 66 years old now or so, and he gets up at, at 4.30 in the morning before it gets light out, and you know, has his cup of coffee, then he, when he can see outside, he goes out and he works in the fields, he cuts grass. I, I saw him the other day, he has one of those weed whipper things. He cut about three acres of grass in the morning before lunchtime out in the hot Philippine sun. He's a hard working guy, let me tell you. And then they rake all that grass up, they carry it all back over to the to the garden area and they mulch it up or they give it to the cows, the, the carabao and the pigs. And he does that every single day. When they, they had a, a big pond they dug uh, down below the rice fields, and they took out about four truckloads, uh, like dump truck loads of dirt out of there, and they dug it all by hand. Him and him and two of Beth's cousins or, or brothers or somebody, whoever they are, and they did it all by hand. And he works harder than he he work me in, in into the ground. He works so hard. And Beth is always gardening and taking care of everything. Her her yard looks like a park. You know, there's there's plantings everywhere. She takes care of the animals and she's again she's just a really nice really nice person. But yeah, they do it they do everything themselves. In fact that's in that's the fact that's the only way you can afford to do it. You're on a pension, you have to do stuff yourself if you're gonna live out in the country. Overview overview on our hut. Winky Man said, so what's wrong with the bamboo floor? Well, there's nothing wrong with the bamboo floor except for it's very weak and it rots out very fast. A bamboo floor is only going to last about a year. Um, they're, they're just a pain in the ass. A, a wood floor like this is, is, this makes it into like a cabin rather than a little hut. Um, our wood floor here is, is fabulous. And it just, it, it totally changed, it totally changed the hut, the atmosphere of the hut, I guarantee you. Uh, you know, I've been in many bamboo, many houses with bamboo floors, and I put my foot through at least five of them so far since I've been here. So, you know, when I walk in someone's bamboo house, I look to where the nails are at, and I step on the the boards, not the bamboo, because I've gone through too many of them. So, wood's much better. Ten times more expensive too, but it was worth. It. We saved. We had to save. We had to cut down three more trees to, to put the floor in here, but it was well worth it. Um, keyboard for the church from the Puerto Rican in Ecuador. Love, love church. Go every Sunday. It's very good for the soul and heart. Well, thank you very much. And, and then everybody here, that's what they think too. <laughs> Phillips House and Beth, Top Yoko, good advice. Well, I'm getting close here. Here's here's a video on the lantern, lanterns, mosquito killers, and mini fishing poles. Um, Puerto Rican in Ecuador says I like the short videos very much. Hope to see more. Yeah, I'm gonna make a lot more short videos too, and and the long ones also. But the I like to get the short ones in there too. A quick bushcraft, quick little bushcraft knife project. Gerald Didden. I like that you can kill a pig easy with that. Well, that was my my uh, my pig sticker knife. That That's an awesome knife. It has, it has a blade about 17 inches long, but it's real narrow and razor sharp on both ends, and you just slide it up up underneath through the pig's ribs and, and uh, pierce his heart, and the pig's dead in a couple seconds. There's no suffering. In fact, it's so sharp that he doesn't even make a squeal sound when you slide it through his ribs. You know, the people here, they, they hit them with hammers and they choke them and they, they cut their throats and you hear the pig squealing for a half hour. And all that squealing and suffering, it pumps adrenaline into the meat and it ruins the meat. So whenever you're going to kill anything, you need to show it respect and try to dispatch it as humanely as possible. That's my opinion. But that's a, what a true woodsman would do. Visit to Philip and Bess uh, from Dorbleski. Dan, please pass along to Philip and Beth for letting you show us more of his homestead. Beautiful place. Can really see the care and love put into the place. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, they they, they put their heart and soul into that place. It's it's just wonderful. It's a fantastic place. But thank you for the comment. I will pass it on to him. Another visit to Beth. John Hickman, I'm super jealous of his farm. I would like to have this. Yeah, I would too. I, I'd like to have what he's got too. He's, he's got better land than we have. 
Um, he has much better soil and stuff and a little better area and plus at the time he had a budget that we never had to, to do things but we live where we live because we bought this piece of land from Mar Marfi's father and this is this is just what we have but we really appreciate this too and, and really enjoy it <laughs> Gerald, Gerald Deedon says wow catch a big fish on that <laughs> on, the, on that little fishing pole but I hope to catch some nice little fish on it uh, why I came to the Philippines with Lurmi? It's awesome that you found a good one. Yeah, my wife's fantastic. This is from Sam P. Sam P. And uh, Marfi is one of the good ones. I'll guarantee you that. Uh, visit to Philip and Vess from Michael Lee. Really have a lot of interest in Philip's setup, chickens, pigs, everything. As I'll be heading back to start our farm in August on our two hectares. Maybe next year in August, I guess. Um, yeah, good luck. Just takes time and energy, a lot of, lot of work, and uh, get yourself planned out real good before you come here. That's the secret. That would be the big secret. Uh, fire kit from Creative Redundancy. I like this belt setup. It looks very useful and easy to just slip on. Great additional info on magnifiers. I have an urban belt setup after seeing this maybe I should make another make other one maybe more uh, than it ends um, yeah creative redundancy the, the belt system is the way to go because you, you put on your belt you're gonna have you're gonna, you're gonna go out in the woods with a knife anyway so you're gonna have it on a belt just put on a belt outside your pants and you have a couple other things hanging from the belt you don't even know they're there but they're always there with you you're never gonna lose your belt no one's going to take your belt from you, so you always have your knife, your fire kit, your medical kit, some string, uh, stuff like that with you. Um, that's the way to go. It's better than a backpack or a knapsack or a haversack or something like that that you're going to set down sometime you're not going to take with you. you. Put your stuff with your knife, you're always going to take your knife with you. So that's, that's my opinion. That's why I do it that way and it's on your belt. You don't you don't feel any of the weight or anything like that. It's not on your shoulders and it's not in the way when you're walking around. Just my own little system. Um, t Tom Lombardini, Mosquito Killers and Lanterns, he says, what the hell? It looks like you're waving that racket pretty close to your wife's face. Is that some sort of bushcraft trick or something? Just saying, no, I was, wasn't trying to whack, whack her in the face. She's sitting on my lap, and that's the way my arm moves. Uh, if that offends you, sorry. Um, the, the little rackets are fantastic for killing mosquitoes. I'll just stop there. But everybody's so critical about everything. The so, Lanterns and Mosquito Killers. Lucas Musser says, looks like you got some good stuff there. I think about a hundred years ago, I used to have a collapsible fishing pole. Yeah, I got several telescoping fishing poles. They're fantastic just to throw in your pack. Put that in a, uh, like say a, uh, an old peanut butter jar with all your lures in it and your sinkers and stuff and some extra line. You, you got your whole setup. Broom. I won't go into that one. Skip these comments here. Um, this is Tom Lombardini again about the rackets. After I made this comment about the racket, I watched the video with the sound off. Very telling. I'm sure this won't be counted as a loss for anyone when I say that this is just about enough of, I don't know what he's talking about. I guess I guess I'm offending you, Tim. I have no idea what you're talking about, and don't really care. So let's continue here. Thought I was just about done with these comments here. Uh, let's see. Here's one about the spiral knot. Uh, that's very impressive. I only know three or four. Couldn't live without them. I would love to have the time to learn some others. I'm thinking 
I'm I'm thinking when I retire goes on. Um, yeah, take a little time and learn some more knots. They're they're fascinating, you know. The, the whoever whoever designed all these knots should be you know you know commended. They're they're, they're fabulous, especially a good knot. Let's see, spiral knot. Uh, Merck Morris. Rod, see his earlier comments. This is an old video, apparently. No, cur oh, he's talking about my trip to Cebu. Yeah, I, I sorry, Rod. I, I, I said on the beginning of it. I wrote in the comments saying this is a reposted video. I didn't say from when, I guess, but. Um, I did have a good time in Cebu. It was, it was just take. I, I wanted to take something to have to protect us if we needed it. Just something to swing to keep people away if we, someone tried to rob us or something, where I couldn't have a, a bolo or something with me. So just just trying to plan ahead and, and foresee any unforeseen circumstances that we might encounter. When I got my wife and daughter with me, I I can't I can't be in a fight because they're there vulnerable so I have to be able to protect them and make sure stuff doesn't happen and Cebu City is a shithole excuse my language there's places that are very nice but there's a lot of problems there you know there's a lot of desperate people there it's huge and there's a lot of people that don't have work that are drug addicts and alcoholics and the whole the whole gamut of, of nastiness so I stay away from it, and when I have to go, I go, but I, I do the best to protect my family. Take that for good or bad, I don't know. Um, solar, the tool bag and solar light, um, I can't say this person's name. I saw an experimental light that lasts for a long time, works on, made of salt and oil. Actually, I believe it's a, it's a can, it's a light that works on salt and water, and uh, uh, a Filipino brother and sister team made it is to run for eight hours in a charge of salt water to help the poor people and uh, we're trying to figure out where to get one just to try it out all it is is uh, I think a piece of zinc and a piece of copper that react that creates electricity um, I found a bunch of a bunch of different videos on how to make one but we just don't have the supplies right now but very interesting though very very interesting So get another one here. I'm about done here, I think. A lot of nonsense comments. Nonsense comments. People talking back and forth just kills me here. Keyboard for the church. Bob Bridgen says that was such a blessing to hear the praise and worship part of the service. Christians all over the world singing those same songs. I would love for my children and my Asawa, which is his wife, to come to Bohol and visit. Come anytime, Bob. You're more than welcome. And there's always a place for you in our church. Spiral knot, amazing Philippines. Let's see. No, they're just they're making fun of Rod, which is crap here. I don't really have any time for that. Now, here, here's a comment from someone, IKZ Chop, saying that I need a permit or something from the DNR to cut down trees on my own land. You know, I, just people just want to make trouble everywhere they go. I, don't, I just don't understand it. Um, here's a person here, J D E L G A D O, 1200 says, "I love the simplicity of your family life there. Sometimes here in the U.S. we get bogged down with all the details and such, and the show of all things. I have a little suggestion, although I'm not. I don't know what else he's saying, but thank you for your comment. And we're back." See, I got a partner again. Marfrey just got back from church. Had a, had a good church there. Yes, it's getting pretty hot here. Super sticky. The real overcast. They say we got a low pressure around us or something. There's a comment from John M about the lanterns, mosquitoes, and mini fishing poles. Yeah, bullheads are good eating and easy to clean. As a boy, I went out at night in a small rowboat to fish them for them in a lake 
Lots of fun to catch. You mentioned carp once before. And then it can, goes on. Um, yeah, I used to love catching bullheads. My my buddies, the Dax, they used to uh, take me out in the country. There was a little stream out just past the John Deere plant that we'd go fishing. We'd always catch bullheads there. And once in a while, you'd catch a, a carp or a bass or something like that there, too, or a nice catfish because we were only about a probably, what, mile and a half from the, the Mississippi River, I think, something like that. Brings back good memories. Yeah, I like that stuff. We used to sit there and make a fire at night. Let's see, same guy, John M. Oh, I forgot. I think that small pole would definitely come in handy in a knapsack. Would be better than just dropping a line, probably. Sim similar to a pole used for ice fishing. Yeah, it's very similar to an ice fishing pole. It's just a, maybe a foot longer. And, uh, and having a nice little reel like that would be fantastic just for throwing a line out. And uh, like I say, it's good for catching uh, small trout or uh, a, a few bluegills or some bullheads or something like that. And it's only about as big as a, a felt tip pen. So it's just absolutely an awesome piece of uh, kit for your, like I say, for your pack or something like that. And again, thanks to Alex for that. Mm, thank you, Andy. Uh, here's a question, comment from from 920 from John Mark Alba Alba Eight or something. How you say it? Yeah, how you say it? Say this nice and loud, Mark. You can read this. Is Marfi your wife? <laughs> Answer it. Yes, I am. Um, yes, Dan's she is. Uh, visit the Beth. And look, I spelled house wrong on the thing. Can you believe that? Yeah. Hi, what a pain, what a pain in the ass. From CJA178. Wow, that man is an artist. Yeah, Phillips really got quite a setup there. He's 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 amazing. Plus, he's a welder and a machinist, and uh, he knows all about religion. And uh, he was a mountain man for a long time up in Montana. Um, look at a video from. A foreigner living in the Philippines, uh, Terrence did a nice video an interview with Philip about his day. He used to be a submariner, um, lived in, born in Wisconsin, uh, was in the Navy and the submarines, moved to Montana, built a log cabin, lived there for 20 years, um, did some traveling, he was a long haul truck driver a lot of his life, and then came here to the Philippines to retire. Yeah, very fascinating guy, but check that video out and uh, go to a foreigner in the Philippines and uh, check out Terrence's stuff and uh, subscribe to him if you would please he's got some really nice videos uh, he just got a new camera so his videos are going to prove a lot with the new camera the photography is much better most of his are filmed with a phone but he has some fantastic subjects so uh, give, him a, give him a chance Unicorn Phantasm visit the Phillips house says does Philip treat the water in the pool with chemicals? Ah, oh, yes he does. He puts a little chlorine in it. And if in, you notice in the video, the, the water looked a little cloudy. He just put chlorine it, in it that morning. So it's just a little cloudy. Because um, they're, using, the, they're us, using some of that water for their kitchen and for their shower in their bathroom. So, um, yeah, you want to keep your stuff treated. That's very important. There's a lot of mosquitoes and stuff here, and could be other kind of bacteria and larvae and stuff like that. Let's see. Uh, early morning chickens and gardening. What do we got there? D F G U K O says, "Have a nice day, but you planting too much plants in a little garden." Well. Uh, I don't think you know what you're talking about, nothing personal. Uh, there used to be a show on public TV called The Square Foot Garden, which has a full plant in every square foot of your garden. Take a look at that sometime. Go back in the archives. And they grew some awesome vegetables and raised beds. Again, one plant per every square foot. Imagine how many plants you could have in our garden. Mm. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. So... They have plenty of room. Mm -hmm. Working in the garden, lesson plant and coconuts by Marfi. Same guy. Says what? In 20 years, OMG. Which means, oh my God. I can't wait so long for it. 
uh, coconut. coconut. Yeah, for a big the big coconut tree, it takes about 20 years for them to start giving you fruit, fruit 15 to 20 years, and then you start getting little ones. Our dwarf coconut trees, they said seven years for coconuts. It's been nine years, and this year they're just starting to produce a few coconuts. So, uh, Same for a mango tree. Most mango trees are seven to ten years before you get fruit. Uh, Philip has some dwarf ones that are, that are producing fruit at six years, which is pretty nice. We got to be getting close to the end here. Oh. Questions and comments from 920. Here's Shannon. Andrew Boyett Camp. Just an observation, not a criticism. These videos are quite long. Perhaps you add links down in the description so we have an index of the questions and skip through as required. Well, I don't have any access, any ability to put links in videos. I, I'm doing this all on my phone. So take them or leave them, I guess. I'm trying to make them as short as I can for you. Um, we had more comments saying they like the long videos. I'm trying to keep them around an hour if possible. And I can make them 20 minutes long if you want or something like that, but it, it's just a lot of extra videos. We'll see what we can do. Ha, huh, that's the last one. Can you believe that? <laughs> All right. Well, we've been at this. I've been at this for like five hours this morning on Sunday. I started. That's yeah, twelve o'clock. I started at seven o'clock. So that's a lot of hours. I uh, took a break for breakfast. Took a break to take Marfie to church and wanted to pick her up. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's about all we did today. But for this one here, wrap this up. Thank you for taking the time to watch our videos. Please click like and subscribe. Uh, share our videos if you want. Please share our videos. Uh, put out links for us on Facebook and your different forums and things if you would. Help us get recognized. Our goal is 20,000 subscribers by Easter. Um, I don't know if we'll make it. We're just very slowly rising. Six or seven a week is all we're getting, so it's not, not enough. But um, more people we, more people see us, the more people subscribe, I guess. Um, you got anything to say, huh? Mm. Thank you for watching our videos.